Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. If someone had told me that the events of the last 10 months would happen, I would have called them a horrible liar. I thought my family was perfect, but now I know it was very far from that and that there is a very thin line between peace and chaos, love and hate. I am 49, male, married to 45, female, and we have two kids together and one by my wife making it three. As a stepfather, I had always tried to do right by my stepdaughter. I had always tried to be there for her, to support her, and to be a positive influence in her life. But everything changed when she said these words to me. I never want to see your face again, and I'm going to ruin your life. It was a shock, to say the least. I had no idea what had triggered such a drastic reaction from her. I had always thought that we had a good relationship, but apparently I was wrong. I tried to reach out to her to understand what had gone wrong, but she refused to speak to me. She packed her bags and left town without a word of explanation. I was confused. I didn't even know we were in a fight, so hearing the resentment in her tone got me worried. I was devastated, but I didn't want to push her away even further, so I decided to give her some space. Two days later, the nightmare continued. My sister-in-law called me with some terrible news. She said that the police were on their way to my house and that I was being accused of raping my stepdaughter. I was stunned. I had no idea what was going on, but my reputation was already being dragged through the mud. My family was falling apart and I felt like I had lost everything. God knows I was panicking, but I had to put myself together so I could handle the situation properly. My family had believed her without giving me a chance to defend myself. My wife was disappointed in me and didn't let me explain. They had called the police and I was arrested, but I was able to get bail. After about a week trying to wrap my head around everything, I felt like my life had been destroyed and I couldn't understand why my stepdaughter would make such false allegations. My life was over. My wife moved out of our house to her own house and wouldn't speak to me. I tried to call her several times, but she didn't answer. I even went to her house, still nothing. Her friends were the worst. They insulted me and said I was a horrible person and I should never call them again. One of them told me to expect the divorce papers from my wife because it was what I deserved. Once I heard that, I couldn't think of anything else. I needed to prove my innocence quickly. I needed my loved ones to trust me again. I loved my wife too much to lose her over a lie. Our kids were in the university. They were the only ones who picked my call. My son said he believed me, but I needed to fix everything as soon as possible. I was filled with anger and a desire for revenge. I wanted my name to be cleared and my reputation restored. I decided to take matters into my own hands and began to investigate the situation. I tried to gather as much evidence as I could, but nothing seemed to lead anywhere meaningful. I even called my stepdaughter's boyfriend, but they had nothing to say. Her best friend was warm towards me when I called. Still, she wasn't of any help. I didn't expect her to be anyway. She was my stepdaughter's best friend. It was very frustrating because I couldn't find any evidence to support my innocence. I had to go through the legal process, but it was long and daunting. I spent months in court fighting for my innocence. I had to prove that I was not capable of committing such atrocities. I knew that I had to clear my name, but it was an uphill battle. I struggled to pick up the pieces of my life. I couldn't move on, couldn't forget what had happened to me. I knew that I had to find a way to prove my innocence, and finally, after months of searching, I had a breakthrough. It was my stepdaughter's best friend who called me. She had a conscience, and she couldn't keep the truth a secret anymore. She told me that my stepdaughter had planned the whole thing, that she had lied to the police, and that she had deliberately set out to ruin my reputation. She said that it had all started as a joke, 
but that my stepdaughter had taken it too far and that she was angry with me because I had refused to fund her lavish lifestyle. It all made sense now. Her mother and I had decided to stop giving her huge sums of money every month because she needed to become a responsible adult instead of expecting hand-me-downs from her parents. We had always been generous with her, but we couldn't let her continue to be irresponsible with her finances. One wouldn't really call what she got hand-me-downs because the amount of money she got in a month some people couldn't boast of getting in a whole year. But it had backfired and my stepdaughter had turned on me in a fit of rage. It was her best friend's word against my stepdaughter's, and I knew that many people wouldn't believe us. They would say that I had bought her best friend's loyalty, that I had paid her to lie. But I knew that I had to find a way to implicate my stepdaughter and have the evidence that she couldn't deny. So I came up with a plan. We arranged for my stepdaughter and her best friend to have a conversation about everything while it was being recorded. It was risky, but it was our only hope. Her best friend was hesitant at first, but I assured her that she was doing the right thing and that she would be helping me to clear my name. The plan worked perfectly. They went out on a girls' night out and my stepdaughter was boasting about how she was living her best life. She said that her mom had doubled her allowance and that she wished she had gone through with the plan sooner. She said that she didn't like me with her mom and that she knew I only married her because she was wealthy. The recording was just what I needed. I moved out of the house and started fresh in a new place. I was determined to clear my name and make sure that everyone knew the truth about what had happened. My lawyer suggested that we look at my stepdaughter's background to find things to support our evidence. It was a long and arduous process, but I was determined to see it through. We gathered evidence, interviewed witnesses, and even hired a private investigator to look into my stepdaughter's past. We found out that she had a history of manipulating people and that this was not the first time she had done something like this. We had a strong case and we were ready to take it to court. The day of the trial arrived, and I was a bundle of nerves. I didn't know what to expect, but I knew that I had to stay strong. The courtroom was packed with people, including my stepdaughter's friends and my family. I could see the disdain in their eyes as I walked in. I knew that they still believed that I was guilty, and that they were only there to support Sarah. My heart broke when I saw my wife. She clearly didn't believe me and hated me for what she thought I had done to her daughter. The trial began and it was intense. The prosecution presented their case and it was clear that they were going to do everything in their power to paint me as the villain. But I had my own team of lawyers who were determined to prove my innocence. They presented evidence, witness statements and even the recording that my stepdaughter's best friend had made. It was clear that she had planned everything and that she had used her best friend to do her dirty work. The jury deliberated for hours and when they finally returned with the verdict, I held my breath. We find the defendant not guilty, the judge said, and I let out a sigh of relief. I had been cleared of all charges and my name had been cleared. I looked over at my stepdaughter and her family and I could see the shock and disappointment in their faces. They had lost and I had won. I didn't feel victorious though. I had lost my family, my wife and my reputation, all because of lies and manipulation. The court said that I was innocent, but that didn't seem to matter to some. They still thought I was lying, but that was their problem. My stepdaughter did not see this coming and now the tides have changed. I'm going to make sure she either gets cut off completely or receives nothing compared to what she got before. I was not going to let her get away with ruining my life. I was going to make sure she faced the consequences of her actions. Her mother was furious, but even more than that, she was hurt. She couldn't believe that her daughter was capable of doing such a thing. I could tell that she was ashamed for not believing me and she came to apologize, but things had changed. We couldn't just go back to normal like nothing had happened. 
I had lost my trust in her and I had no faith in our relationship. It took me a while to admit it, but I guess my stepdaughter was the one who won because she had broken our marriage. Everything was awkward, the tension was high, and we were always fighting until one day I decided I no longer wanted to try to fix the broken pieces. I left. NTA, you did nothing wrong, and it's your wife's fault for not believing you. If you have no faith in your marriage, then there is no reason to stay in it. YTA, I think you could have pardoned your wife. She had no way of knowing that you didn't rape her daughter, especially with how rampant it is these days. They didn't show you mercy when they thought you raped your stepdaughter, but you are not merciful to your wife either. This can be fixed, but you don't want it to be. I am a happily child-free adult. Babies have always made me super uncomfortable. I don't like looking at them, being in their presence, or really hearing about them. I used to have panic attacks if I had to be near a baby or toddler, even for a minute or two. If a baby or toddler touched me, I'd freak out and have to go wash off a few layers of skin. I don't know what caused such an intense reaction, but it's always been like this. I've been working on at least being more cordial and tolerant with babies and toddlers to the point that I no longer have panic attacks. However, they still make me very uncomfortable and I don't want anything to do with them. I have a friend, we'll call her Sally, who knows that I do not like babies and how uncomfortable they make me. Sally had a baby several months back. I was polite and congratulated her. Ever since, every so often, she'll randomly message me about her baby. She'll start with, I know you don't like babies, but and then send pictures of her baby, tell me about toys or clothes she bought for her baby, etc. I usually reply in brief messages like, nice, or okay, and leave it at that. I don't want to be mean, so I just give a minimal response. I delete photos immediately, usually our conversations too, because I'm not interested. Sally and I are not, nor have we ever been close friends. Recently, Sally posted in a group chat we're both in, asking for people's addresses if they want to receive a Christmas card from her baby. That's how she worded it. I figured if I didn't fill out the document, that would be an easy, non-confrontational way to ensure I would not be receiving baby pictures in the mail. Unfortunately, Sally messaged me privately today asking for my address so she could send a Christmas card. So my silent opt-out is no longer an option. Will I be the a-hole if I tell her I don't want a Christmas card from her baby and to please stop sending me photos and updates about said baby? YWBTA You don't even need to open the card. Use tongs to take it out of the mailbox and drop it immediately in the garbage. Sally is being a little too obtuse about sharing her baby excitement, but this, literally and figuratively, is life. Sally could be lonely and struggling with the change of having a baby. Everyone has issues. It won't harm you at all to be polite about mail. Next time Sally messages you something about the baby, ask how she's doing. Sally, not the baby. She could just be looking for dialogue with an adult, and baby on the brain has limited the topics she can think of. That could be a win-win for you both. If OP was afraid of snakes or spiders and someone insisting on exposing her to them constantly, would you be so dismissive? Oh, I know, you have a phobia of spiders. Let me send you these pictures of my new pet tarantula. He is so cute. OP is polite and tries to be non-confrontational about her fears. She is making progress and getting help. OP has the right to exist without being constantly exposed to her fears and bombarded with unwanted pictures. Her friend is not entitled to her attention, address, or anything else in regard to her baby. OP is NTA, and people need to accept that no one else apart from very close friends and family cares about their babies. I, 25 male, married my wife, 33 female, this past winter. We have two kids together, 45 and 18 months. I work full-time, but my wife's a stay-at-home mom. 
The reason I mention this is that my wife has never had many friends, and by many I mean she's had a max of four at a time in the years I've known her. The one friend she's always had, Kayla, thirty-five female, she's known for twenty years. She's seven hours from us. Her other friends also have kids around the same age as our daughter. They are Cody, twenty-eight female, and Casey, thirty-five female. They met as the kids have the same key worker at the daycare. Kayla was supposed to be my wife's maid of honor, but she got multiple trips to urgent care, sick two weeks before the wedding. Eventually, we said it was best if Kayla skipped it. My wife was gutted not to have her best friend there, but had Cody step in. A couple of days ago, I heard my wife talking to Cody and Casey about how she hadn't heard from Kayla in months, and Kayla doesn't check in. They were trashing her and talking about how when they all met up with her for my wife's doe show, like a bucks night for women in Kayla and my wife's hometown. Kayla has been boring, awkward, and a downer the whole time. They pointed out that Kayla was a sucky, self-interested piece of suck who didn't understand how hard it was to be a mother, and they'd all needed that night because she doesn't have kids yet, and that my wife was right to cut her the duck out when she didn't show to the wedding or apologize. I waited for Casey and Cody to leave before asking my wife, "WTF?" She meant. My wife's response was to say that it was just girl talk, and that Cody was right anyway about everything she'd said. I was very quick to point out that before the others, Kayla was the only friend my wife had. She bent over backwards for my wife and my daughter, and would often drop whatever she was doing to drive down in a babysitting emergency, or if she just had time. I reminded her that it wasn't practical for Kayla to take off work and drive six plus hours for silly wedding tasks, and that she probably felt completely alienated in her own home on my wife's doe show, because I know for a fact that the only thing my wife, Casey, and Cody have in common is their kids. So it wouldn't surprise me if that was all they talked about. She desperately wants to be like C and C. Just to have people around her, so I get it. I finished pointing out how ducked up it was for my wife to agree that Kayla doesn't understand because she's not a mother, when she was there through Kayla losing three babies, and telling her that it's her own fault that Kayla doesn't want anything to do with her anymore because she is the sucky, self-centered friend, not Kayla. My wife didn't respond. She immediately burst into tears, packed a bag, and left. Everyone is texting and calling me. I'm an a-hole, and I need to apologize. But I think it was the reality check my wife needed. A I T A. I'm using duck, duckling, because those were the actual words used since both girls had their kids over, and they don't like to curse in front of them. My age gap marriage is not the point of this post. Unfortunately, NTA. I think everyone is allowed to have a perspective, and I actually think you communicated respectfully. Your wife, on the other hand, seems to be the A H for leaving, and then obviously trying to get others to harass you. Your wife sounds toxic, and unfortunately, if that's who she is, you might need to consider leaving her. It seems impossible for her to handle any sort of proper discussion, and this is only going to get worse with time. NTA, Kayla probably felt like the fourth wheel, which is an unsetting position to be in when one of the other three wheels is your best friend of twenty years. In fact, I didn't with my best friend of fifteen years for a year or so. She eventually reached out when she realized those two girls were not good people. One of them wound up talking shit about her in a group text instead of a private one. We reconnected quickly once she apologized and said she realized who they really were. I'm not a person who takes being talked poorly about, and I will disconnect very quickly from it. The C and C friends are not very good friends to your wife. Purposefully isolating her from a friend of twenty years by talking poorly about. 
okay, as if everyone else could see it and your wife was just oblivious. When Kay was probably excited to see her and then felt alone in a group of four people. Additionally, it's most likely the only drama they can create for entertainment. Being moms and not having any time away from their kids and all. What other drama are they going to create? Their pediatrician told them their kid needs speech therapy? The preschool drop-off line was super slow? I don't know. Sounds like her other two friends are just rude and bored.